Hello, brothers and sisters and YouTube family. Hope you guys are being blessed. I've still been struggling heavily with Jesus since the fall and desire to be content getting raiments from him rather than trying to hear his voice or get a message from him. So I decided to choose a Rhema reading from St. Faustina, Diary of Divine Mercy for my soul book. And wow, he cut my heart again with the reading he gave me, which brought me to tears. That's why I encourage you all to get readings from holy books every day, besides the rhema he gives you, because Jesus really speaks through the reading to share what's on his heart or what is going on with your heart. You all have heard me read this passage before in a previous message, when I was again afraid to come to him. So getting this again brought tears to my eyes as I realized I was doing the same thing. It read, as I'm paraphrasing, When I became aware of God's great plan for me, I was frightened at the greatness and felt myself quite incapable of fulfilling them. And I began to avoid interior conversations with him, filling up the time with vocal prayer. I did this out of humility. I soon recognized it was not true humility, but rather a great temptation from the devil. When on one occasion, instead of interior prayer, I took up a book of spiritual readings, I heard these words spoken distinctively and forcefully within my soul. You will prepare the world for my final coming. These words moved me deeply, and although I pretended not to hear them, I understood them very well and had no doubt about them. Once being tired out from this battle of love with God and making constant excuses on the ground that I was unable to carry out this task, I wanted to leave the chapel. Then the following section said, I went to see my confessor and reveal the condition of my soul to him, especially the fact that I was avoiding interior conversations with God. I was told that I must not shrink from interior conversations with God, but should listen intently to the words he speaks to me. I was still so fearful after the fall, guys. So when I realized he desired to continue to speak to me, I said, Lord, please forgive me and pull me out of fear into faith and trust coming to you. I'm so sorry. I continue to shy away more than ever than coming before you to hear your words. And Jesus responded, what do you fear? Lord, I fear so many things. Deception for one again, my pride puffing up as you've been giving me humility every day now in the Bible promises, and most importantly, leading anyone astray. I've had thoughts of not wanting to do this anymore because it seems more comfortable to get rhemas instead of hearing from you. Please forgive me, Lord, help me. And Jesus continued, my beloved little one, I am the shepherd of this flock and I will not lead them astray, and I will not lead you astray. Even in your correction, my rod and staff will comfort and lead you. You know how important you are to me in this work. It's not just about you, but many are in desperate need of life-giving words, which I'm using one of the poorest vessels to speak through, so that they may know they have access to me in all their weaknesses as well, little one. Don't continue to be discouraged any longer, beloved. If you doubt my words or my calling to you, Go to your covering to confirm this is my will for you. I need you to come before me every day despite how you're feeling, which many times is intense opposition from demons of condemnation, fear, exaggerated anxieties that want to stop you from coming, and most importantly, stop this work. Don't fear the roars of Satan. He is truly but a lame lion with no teeth or bite that can't kill you, but wants to kill your faith. Don't allow him to steal this precious gift and grace from you and the many souls I want to touch through you. My beloved little ones, many of you long and desire for this gift in hearing my voice. I tell you now that grace is available to all who ask, all who would come, and all who would persevere. Intimacy with me will cost you everything, my beloved. I allow this soul to share her weaknesses, struggles, trials, and corrections to let you know what this relationship entails. My brides, you were created for my purpose. You belong to me. And when you surrender your will to me, I can work with you, giving you graces to go much deeper with me. Much deeper. But many give up so easily. Many are not willing to persevere amidst the enemy's attacks. Many are not willing to really press in with prayer and deny themselves everything I ask for them to give up. I start off small at first. Maybe asking you to give up a small affection, like entertainment video games, choice foods. Then once you've conquered that, I ask for your time, 
is I desire to spend more time with you in my presence than you do with your loved ones and family members. Then I ask you to lay down your preferences, opinions, and desires for the future and allow me to fill you with my will, which I will give you grace to fulfill. However, so many give up because they think I ask too much of them, not realizing they're running after things that will not satisfy and continue to put the amazing plans and destinies I have for them on the back burner. It's like Esau selling his birthright for a bowl of stew. That's how laughable it is from the perspective of heaven. However, I've never given up on my brides, although many of you give up on me. I wait patiently until you find yourself dry, empty, tired, lonely, and long for me alone. Then I rush in giving you the grace necessary to draw you into a deep place of intimacy with me. With that also comes maturity, my beloved ones. I can give you a word, if that's what you want, but I desire conversation, relationship, sharing our most intimate thoughts with one another, and giving you guidance and instructions for things to come. So because of that, I must keep my hand of strict love upon you, as I remove affection from anything or anyone that is not me, so that I can be your source. I must also try you in the fiery furnace of purity that brings things up and out of you that are not of me so you don't become a crack vessel who will eventually crack others in the process. You see, when a potter makes a pot, he must ensure there are absolutely no particles or fragments in the clay, because when put in the fire, the smallest fragments will rise when baking. And the pressure of the fire will cause the fragment to come out with such violent force, bursting the pot and all the other pots in the furnace. So you see, that's why I must always allow falls and trials to purify you, my beloved brides. The fire I allow in your lives is always for your good. For what father doesn't correct those he loves? The deeper the desire for intimacy with me, the more you must be purified, that you may resemble me. So the fire only gets hotter the longer we walk together, my beloved ones. But my presence and intimacy gets much, much sweeter. Are you willing to have me at any cost? Are you willing to let go of all things that bind you, but don't fulfill you? Are you willing to let go of all, and even yourself, that you can have me entirely, the fullness of my presence living and moving in you? If so, come, my beloved ones, I've forgiven you, and give you now the grace to hear my voice, and persevere in hearing my voice. Come. That was the end of Jesus' message. A fellow heart dweller by the name of Stella reached out to me and wanted me to share my struggles and successes in hearing God's voice. So I told her I would if the Lord brought it up. And I guess it's a very appropriate message to give some tips and pointers as to how to hear God's voice. I want to say this grace is available for everyone, just as he mentioned in scripture. He says, my sheep hear my voice, not my anointed, my called, my gifted, my prophets, my pastors, no. He said, my sheep, which means all of his children have the ability to hear his voice and follow him. Jesus has given Mother Claire so many teachings on obstacles or what stops us from hearing his voice on Still Small Voice channel, which I will link the album to those teachings in the description of this message. Because it was through her ministry, I began to hear Jesus speaking to me. I simply applied what he told us to do and what not to do. So first thing is you have the ability to hear God's voice. You're created from him. He is your home, so he wants you to hear his voice and follow him to lead you back to him. And to also give you counsel in these times that are heavy with deception and darkness. Secondly, Jesus is talking all the time in so many different ways. And I did a video about that, which I'll also link in the description. Many get frustrated because they want to hear him in a certain way. If you do that, you put Jesus in a box and you'll frustrate yourself from actually hearing him when he speaks to you. You can hear him in your heart, which many times comes like random thoughts, or you can sense what he's trying to say like infused wisdom. I encourage everyone who desires to hear him to begin journaling. That is where it all begins, to write down what you're feeling. Then quiet yourself and wait to hear what thoughts come to your mind. I would also encourage everyone to bind demons of fear, doubt, distraction, and unbelief. As Jesus mentioned in one of his other messages, that 99% of the reason we have trouble hearing from him is because of our unbelief. You walk away thinking that it's your own mind or you're talking to yourself and that hurts him. 
So bind those demons and then write down your thoughts before the Lord, what you're struggling with, what you want to tell him. Then after that, ask Jesus, what is on your heart? Then wait. I found that when people think they're hearing from Jesus, they actually get scared and tense up. <laughs> it happened to me. But when you approach it by writing down simply what you think he's saying, it removes anxiety. I did that with the two souls who came to visit and are coming with me to Ghana, and they begin to get their own messages from Jesus. It was amazing. Now when you get a thought, keep writing. Don't stop. Because I tell you, a thought from demons will come to your mind to say, this is stupid, I'm talking to myself. This cannot be Jesus. But keep writing. Finish writing down what you think he's saying, then go back. And reread, then discern. You'll be amazed at the wisdom you hear when you're reading it is not your own, but the Lord's. So always write down everything. Then you can always go back and discern. Many times we hear from God. Like, have you ever had a conversation with yourself? <laughs> Could be a, about a circumstance or something that's asked of you and you're going back and forth many times in your mind. It's the Holy Spirit you're speaking to, but you think it's your mind. So when you feel a series of thoughts coming to your mind, just begin to write them down. It's the Lord wanting to speak to you. Or he'll give you an inspiration, like an idea will pop in your mind. That's him as well, many times. I started hearing from the Lord in 2018, up until now, but stopped every time. I'll begin writing every day for about a month or two, then will stop each year. It wasn't until last year I went back and read my journals, and I was flabbergasted that Jesus had been talking to me the whole time. But to be honest, I didn't believe it was him. So I would write, but wouldn't trust what I wrote, therefore not listening to his counsel. So you must renounce unbelief. That is the biggest obstacle. Another way is when you're getting readings or rhemas, which is a Holy Spirit anointed word just for you. You can get three rhemas or words from the Lord every day on Heart Dwellers website. I'll have the link in the description as well. And that is what I began to do. Using that to hear from the Lord so he can order and direct my steps. I took the rhemas very seriously, so should you. You can turn the rhemas into a message by writing them down, saying, Jesus, I think you're telling me to, and begin writing down the readings or the rhemas. So hopefully that encourages you guys a little bit, and definitely as time goes on, I believe the Lord will give more messages um, on how to really hear his voice, and I'll continue to reference many to a still small voice a channel, because the Lord does so many teachings from there that help me tremendously. And his desire is that not only do you get fed from this channel, but more importantly, that you get fed from him. He wants to speak to you. He is speaking to you. You just have to tune your ears to listen and remove every obstacle in your way that stops you from hearing him. If he's asking of you certain things, food, entertainment, things that are holding you, binding you, willful sin, all of these things will stop you from hearing God's voice. And guys, I'm telling you, it's not worth it. It is not worth it. Let go of everyone and everything just to have Jesus. Truly, he's your all in all. And he is so worth the struggle. He is so worth the uh, perseverance. He's so worth the seeking. And I remember one time in Mother's Messages, he said that he's a hard catch. He's not easy to find. So for those who are continue to seek him and you feel yourself, oh, I'm doing everything, but I'm still not hearing. Continue seeking him. I came to Jesus in 2015, and it wasn't until three years later that I began to actually hear from the Lord, like through messages or in my heart. But from 2015 to 2018, he was speaking to me through various means of rhemas, through books and dreams and um, visions through other people. He's speaking all the time and through his word, through scripture. That's one of the best ways to hear from God. I think that's where every believer first should start. Begin to read his word because that's what's going to help you discern. When you know God's word and then he begins to speak to you, you can then discern by using his scripture because the Lord will never ever say anything that contradicts his word. He'll never say anything that contradicts the Bible. And so that's one of the ways I begin to hear from him. So if you have not read the Bible, specifically the Gospels, I encourage every single one of you guys to read the Gospels, which is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Read all of the Gospels, and then from there, begin to sit with the Lord and dwell in prayer, and begin to write down what you think he's saying. It's very important that you are definitely strong and founded in his word, so that you're able to discern the things that you're hearing. So I pray that this message encouraged you, it blessed you, 
the Lord has just released grace for you all to hear his voice. So I encourage you to not allow this grace to be squandered. Don't allow this grace to pass you by as well and not, and not take a hold of it. Begin today by spending time with the Lord in his presence, reading his word, and then journaling to hear what he has to say. And I'm looking forward to hearing testimonies. Please send me emails or comment down below in the videos to come uh, when you begin to hear from the Lord as well. God bless you guys. Love you guys so much. Thank you for your words of encouragement, for your prayer, and thank you for your continued to donate. You guys are amazing. May God continue to bless you and increase you. Lord, I just thank you for this word. I thank you for this message, Lord. May your word go forth and not return void, Jesus. Lord, I thank you so much for your mercy upon my life, Lord. Truly, I'm so worthless and such a poor vessel. But I thank you that in my worthlessness, Lord, in my nothingness, that you can continue to use me. Lord God, not that I be exalted, but Jesus, that you, that you could draw so many souls to yourself. Lord, I pray that more souls would come, come and come and hunger and thirst for you, Jesus, to desire to know you, Lord, to know your heart, to dwell with you in intimacy, Jesus, and to hear your voice. I bind right now every demon of fear. I bind on every demon anxiety and I bind on every demon of doubt and unbelief that continues to oppress your children and our children. We bind the back of force retaliation. Please ascend them and cast them the abyss in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Move every demonic veil, Lord God, every fog brainness, Lord, foggy brain, and every demonic projection over your sons and daughters, Lord God. Demonic helmets that stop them from hearing your voice, Jesus. Any obstinate minds, you just command them right now to be loosened and any hardened hearts to be softened, Lord. And I pray for those who are hungry. Lord, those who have been thirsting and hungry for righteousness, Jesus, you said they would be satisfied. So I pray for those souls who are listening right now, that they would receive those graces. And Blessed Mother, that you would give them the grace to use those graces in order to pursue, to hear God's voice and to persevere in hearing Jesus' voice as well in jesus my name i pray i thank you lord for all your love and your mercy towards us amen god bless you guys till the next message